Hey everybody, welcome to my video on calculating consumer and producer surplus from a table. Uh, so far I've made a few videos about consumer and producer surplus where I give you a graph like this one and you learn how to calculate those measures of well-being. Uh, but sometimes you don't get a graph. Sometimes instead you get some sort of table that tells you your buyer's willingness to pay. Buyer 1 willing to pay 10 for instance. Buyer 2, 8, 3, 6, 4, 4, and 5, 2. Uh, these tables, as I've mentioned before, give you points along a demand curve. Or they can make for a stair-stepped demand curve, whichever way you want to look at it. But in any case, these buyers, each having different willingnesses to pay, make up our demand curve. So let's take a demand curve like this and say that the price is 4. Well, if the price is 4, how much consumer surplus is going to be in the market? First thing we need to do is decide whether each buyer is going to want to buy the good. And so what we're going to do is we're going to compare the willingness to pay of each of these to the price. And we can tell pretty quickly, this one will buy it, this one will buy it, this one will buy it, this one will buy it. Because those ones are all willing to pay the $4, buyer 5 won't. So let's calculate consumer surplus for each. For buyer 1, willing to pay $10, they only pay $4, they get $6 of surplus. Buyer 2. 8 minus 4 is 4. Buyer 3, 6 minus 4 is 2. Buyer 4 breaks even. 4 minus 4 is 0. Buyer 5 doesn't buy anything. Okay. Consumer surplus is equal to the sum of all of the individual surpluses. 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 0 equals $12. That is the process for calculating consumer surplus when you have a table. It's the same idea of calculating this area, except instead of having it be a triangle, it has to be the area for each one of these, the gap for this consumer, plus the gap for that consumer, plus the gap for that consumer, and so on. Uh, very similar ideas with supply curves. There's a seller, they have a cost or a willingness to sell. Seller one has a cost of one, two has a cost of two, three, four, five, you get the deal. If the price is four, we know that Sellers 1, 2, 3, and 4 will all be willing to sell the good, and seller 5 won't. So, how much producer surplus is in this market? 4 minus 1, so $4 coming in minus the $1 cost is producer surplus of 3. 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 minus 3 is 1. 4 minus 4 is 0. And that one's not selling anything. Producer surplus is the sum of all of those individual producer surpluses. 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0 equals 6. So I can tell you that this market, if the price is 4, has $6 of surplus. Oh, sorry, $6 of producer surplus, $12 of consumer surplus, $18 of total surplus. What if instead I said that the price is 3? So not in equilibrium. This is going to lead us to a point where quantity supply does not equal quantity demanded. First thing we need to do is we need to determine who are going to be our buyers and our sellers. Well, at this price, all four of these are willing to buy the good. They all have willingness to pay above the price. But at this price, there will only be three people willing to sell it. Because for seller four and five, their costs are bigger than the price. Unfortunately, for our fourth buyer, that means they're probably not going to get to buy it. So our consumer surplus calculation would count only the three who are actually going to be able to buy a good. Just like uh, when you put a price ceiling in this market, you lose that last transaction and create a deadweight loss over here. That's what's happening here. We're losing a transaction going from four to three. Consumer surplus then, let's see, we have a seven for the first character, five, three, and a nothing. Seven plus five plus three, and you get $15. If you hear my kids screaming in the background, blame COVID-19, dang it. What about producer surplus? The first seller is going to make $2, the second seller is going to make $1, the third seller is going to break even, and the other ones don't sell anything, and so the total is $3.
you might notice that the actual total surplus here didn't change. Total surplus when price is four was 18. Total surplus is still 18. Uh, that's because we had this, these like stair steps. That fourth transaction that we lost was actually a zero surplus transaction. It won't always be that way. So don't count on that always happening. But in any case, we are able to figure out who's going to get to buy the goods based on the different prices, calculate the consumer and producer surplus based on that. Uh, these tables give us a lot of the same information that the graphs do. You just have to work with them more discreetly and with less smooth equations. So I hope this is helpful to you. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck and happy econing.